Man, I'm not going to say Kendall Bryles got played, but Kendall Bryles may have gotten played. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online, And they have you covered every season, especially this season, with props, odds, and lines more so than ever before. Head over to Bet Online where the game starts. It's Friday, folks. You finally made it. Excited for the weekend. And I know that there's a lot of things we're going to talk about here today and maybe a shorter podcast, too, uh, because of uh, just uh, time constraints or whatever they want to call them there. But uh, Kendall Bryles and in this situation, which we talked about in depth yesterday about Kendall Bryles going to TCU, Dan Enos officially been hired and now it's officially official is made yesterday. He's already out there recruiting. And uh, the more I have heard about this and heard and thought about uh, Dan Enos getting hired. I've talked to former players. I had Austin Allen, former Razorback quarterback, on my show yesterday, and he is pumped up and excited. Uh, in fact, every single player, former player that was under Dan Enos, are, they're, they're pumped. They, they think that this is a huge, huge get for Arkansas. So I was a little bit more on the, you know, we'll see, but the more and more I hear, the probably I psych myself up and say that uh, it's a great hire, which it may end up being. But when you got former players really going out and all crazy and saying it's going to be amazing, then... It's hard not to start believing it just a little bit. But enough about that, because that's that's moving forward. The thing with Kendall Bryles, though, what's very interesting is Arkansas announced it. Dan Enos, that is. That he was officially hired before Kendall Bryles was ever officially announced at TCU. And to this day, at this time of this recording, at 11.13 in the morning on Friday, January 20th, Kendall Bryle still has not been officially announced as TCU's offensive coordinator. So Arkansas didn't announce anything about Kendall Bryle's leaving. They just, yeah, this is our guy. And so I, I kind of put the theory last week or earlier this week about Kendall Bryle's, Jimmy Sex, and all that. And it looks to be that it's might be pretty true, or at least there may be some truth to it. And if you don't believe me, how about this? I'm going to play a clip from Brandon Marcello of 24-7 Sports, he came on my radio show on Out of Bounds 103.7 The Buzz yesterday and gave some insight into what possibly went down and what happened behind the scenes with Kendall Bryles and Sam Pittman and the negotiations and everything and had some really interesting thoughts. Take a listen to this. Arkansas fans know there was some flirtation there about his representation with Mississippi State just a couple of weeks ago, and that lasted for the better part of a week. And, you know, we told Sam Pittman, listen, I, I'm going to stay here, and they decided that's great. Um, we're going to work out a new contract for you, give you a raise. Um, let's get this thing going. And everybody saw Kendall Bryles, of course, went on Twitter and shared it. Ran it back with K.J. Jefferson. And then the TCU job came open um, late last week. The murmurs started happening with Garrett Riley going to Clemson. And um, immediately, Sonny Dykes at TCU thought, hey, I'm going to go get trying to go Kendall Browse from the Air Raid Tree, Texas guy. Know him very well. And that got out, and Kendall Browse was entertaining it. And uh, Sam Pittman was sitting there kind of like, what's going on, man? I thought we were committed to coming back. I can't be doing this all the time with you back and forth. And my understanding from talking to some folks is that he wasn't even recruiting the Arkansas players. He was kind of pulled off here this past weekend while he was weighing whether to go to TCU or not. And that almost not necessarily sealed Kendall Browse's state, but probably gave him that little extra push. He needed to just go to TCU and call it a career, call it a day at Arkansas. You could only play... I guess with fire and flirt around too much until you kind of get burned or get caught and uh, get something that maybe you don't want and flirt it with some job opportunities. And I think in the end, um, it was just time for both parties to move on. And I think here in the end, we're going to see that, you know, Kendall Browse isn't necessarily getting a pay raise at TCU or anything like that. And he needed a fresh start. And I think both sides probably did. So after hearing that, from what Brandon Marcel is reporting, which if Brandon Marcel reports it, it might as well be scripture because uh, he's great at what he does and great job with 24-7 sports. But if Brandon Marcel is saying that, 
goes into what happened behind the scenes. First off, I 100% can see that happening. And second off, what it sounds like to me, and assuming that this is true, Kendall Bryles got played. Kendall Bryles is the one that ended up on the wrong side of this whole thing. Because for whatever reason, it still has not been announced officially to TCU. Because you, you would feel like if it was as set in stone and everything was good to go, they'd announce it already, especially since he's no longer at Arkansas. So what's the holdup? Hmm. Interesting. I think that for obvious reasons that Brandon said, Sam Pittman and Hunter Yurchek got tired of this. They're like, we're not doing this anymore. We did it last year. We've already done it this year once. We're not doing it twice. Hit the road. Hit the road. Go. That's the vibe I'm getting. And if that's the case, and then again, if that's true, I have more respect for Sam Pittman and Hunter Yurichek than I did before. I will admit, I was a Kendall Bryles fan. I didn't want to see him go. I liked what he did offensively. I did. But with these types of games that get played, I'm like, okay, I'm done with you. Like, this isn't worth it. You're, you're not worth it. You're not worth this hassle, this frustration. And the fact that he wasn't even recruiting the players that they, and Arkansas is needing players they need to recruit right now. He's the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. He wasn't recruiting any of the players that he was supposed to be in that day, a few day span. Mm -mm. See ya. Get out. That was a get out moment. And what a power move. What a flex by Sam Pittman and, and you're a check in Arkansas saying, go, here's our guy. You're hired. Can't wait to work with you, Dan Enos. Kendall Brawls, who never heard of him. Come on in, buddy. We'll make this work. So, again, this is all just assuming that what Brandon said was true, which I believe it is. That, that's, a, that's a power move, and I love it. I love it so much. I think Brawls got played. I think that the fact that he's going to go to TCU and probably – I'll be interested to see what they pay him. And maybe that's – I think that's why the negotiations are why it hasn't been officially announced yet that he is going to TCUs because Jimmy Sexton's like, oh, crap. Uh, because you know, baby TCU's like, well, we'll pay you, you know, how about how about nine hundred thousand? No, 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 no. We 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 need at least at least one point five because that's what we got. Uh, we were gonna get at Arkansas because he was getting a two hundred fifty thousand dollar raise. He was gonna get one point five million dollars according to reports. That's Kendall Bryles at Arkansas, so they're probably wanting to at least match it. TCU's probably like, well, we can't afford that, or maybe we're not wanting to do that. Maybe we don't want to sign him on, or maybe we're really not that interested because we have somebody else we're looking at too. Like, there's so many different things that could be going on. Maybe he actually ends up being with TCU. But if he gets paid the same or less than what Arkansas is going to pay him, I think that's going to tell the whole story. That's going to tell the whole story. That this was not a move of, hey, you're going to TCU because it's a better gig, like so many people were trying to tell me, or going to TCU because they could pay you more or whatever. This is a move to where, you want to play if you play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes, and your stupid prize is going to TCU for a pay cut. Get out of the SEC, go down to that school in Fort Worth. Probably will have some success. Maybe you will, but you're not going to be coaching on my team anymore. You're not going to be coaching KJ Jefferson anymore. You don't have that privilege. Go. That's the vibe I get. Whether it's true or not, we'll see. But that's the vibe. And I even saw something that was pointed out. Take it for what it is. But I saw it was pointed out that KJ Jefferson no longer follows <laughs> Kendall Bryles on the uh, on Twitter. So I, I think that that's kind of a thing. Because I was kind of worried. I was like, maybe he's trying to take KJ. No, 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 no. KJ's good. KJ's fine. KJ's staying. Love you, KJ. Love it. And I love the fact that you're staying. And I really hope that this story is true, that he got played. Because, it, again, it just makes it that much sweeter. Makes it that much better. So love that. Can't wait to see uh, more details on that as it goes along. Folks, betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find them all at BetOnline as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get on all your sports betting info. So head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more over at BetOnline, where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, I uh, just I'm not going to try to rant too much. Not going to try to rant too much about this, but we got to talk about it. SEC comes out with a statement yesterday, admitting they screwed up in the Arkansas Missouri game to one mistake, which is more than any that you could say for any other game. Very seldom they own up to mistakes, uh, but as far as the 56 fouls that were called in this game. They at least admitted that they got one wrong, and the one they got wrong, not only did they get wrong, but it was a major, major, major gaffe that had a huge impact in this game. People tell me refs don't lose games. Well, that's true, but they do impact them enough to have a different outcome than what should have happened. So the SEC puts out this official statement. Get a load of this crap. With 43.7 seconds remaining in the second half of the Arkansas-Missouri men's basketball game on January 18th, The officials called a player control foul against an Arkansas player, Devo Davis, that came into contact with a Missouri defender who was inside the restricted area arc. By rule, the location of the player in the rotation to the restricted arc area arc is reviewable in the last two minutes of a contest. When the officials on site went to review the play, the video replay center incorrectly communicated to them that the play was not reviewable. Therefore, the play stood as called on the floor. The SEC collaborative replay process has been providing accurate and efficient outcomes since it was implemented in 2017. All on-court replay officials are evaluated on an ongoing basis, and performance evaluations are used to determine game assignments, SEC tournament and postseason tournament games. The SEC continues to evaluate, refine, and improve the SEC officiating process. I went through like 18 different impressions and that's one like paragraph. So I don't know what I was trying to do, but get out of here with that nonsense. It's absolute garbage. It's garbage. Okay. Like kudos to you saying you got something wrong. Whatever. Baby steps progress. This play right here. Doesn't go into detail as far as what all was actually going on in the game, but let me provide you a little bit of context. At this particular play, the game was tied at 71 apiece with 43 seconds left to go in this game. Devo Davis was called for his fifth foul with a player control foul to which he had to go to the bench. It was a turnover for Arkansas. Jalen Graham had to come in and... Arkansas ended up on the other side of the floor having a foul call against Kamani Johnson. That was his fifth foul. He has to come out. Also, Joseph Pinion comes in. And then the next play down the court, Jalen Graham loses it on a turnover after Missouri took a two-point lead on their free throws. This had a direct impact on the game. You could make the argument that this play right here is what won the game for Missouri. Because if it was called correctly, like it should have been, Devo Davis doesn't foul out and goes to the free throw line to shoot two. Even if he makes only one free throw, just one of two free throws, Arkansas has the lead, Devo Davis gets to stay in the game, and you have a different mindset and mentality that Missouri ends up having. Now, the final 40 seconds of the game, how would it have turned out? Would Missouri still have won? Maybe so, because it changes everything. But you can't tell me that not only not getting two free throws and a foul call changes the game with 40 seconds left when it's tied, but not having Devo Davis, one of your best defenders and veterans in those situations, out of the game and having to bring in somebody off the bench doesn't have an impact on the game too. Like, I I get tired of this. I get tired of not only the pathetic excuse for officiating that goes on in the SEC, but also the disgusting like idea that, oh, this, this is fine. This is, this is enough. No, it's not enough. It's not enough. You, like both these teams needed this game desperately. Arkansas for sure needed this game. And because of the gap in officiating, Arkansas lost the game. Like it had a direct impact. I don't care what anybody says. And on top of all that, on top of all that, you went to review it. It would have been one thing if it was a judgment call that was bang, bang, non-reviewable, can't figure it out, sucks, but that's the way it is. I wouldn't like it. I'd complain about it, but
but at least it would be something to where, hey, stuff like that happens. But you're talking about a play where there was a foul call. The refs in that game go to review this play. They reviewed it. They went to the monitor. And then the person wherever in Birmingham or wherever he was at said, yeah, uh, I can't review that. So uh, the play has to stand. So I'm like, hold on a second, hold on a second. Dave Neal, who was on the call, knew it was reviewable. The refs, obviously, felt like it was reviewable because that's why they went to the monitor. So they must have known that, yeah, this is something we got to review. So they knew it. Dave Neal knew it. Many people out there knew it. But the person whose job is to know what to review and what not to review, the person's job, that's all he does, didn't know it was reviewable. That person should be fired. I, You know what? Is that mean? Is that harsh? Do I know that person? Do I know him personally? Do they have a family? I don't know. All right? But when your job is to know something like that, all right, to know the like that's the basics of your job is to know what you review and what you don't. That's what you're that's what you're paid to do. And you incorrectly call that when it seems that everybody else knows that it's a reviewable play. You need to lose your job. Sorry, that would be like me going on the radio. And my job is to talk on the radio. And then I just start dropping F-bombs. And it's like, wh what are you doing? Like, do you, that's the basic thing that you can't do. You, you should know you can't do that. Well, I, I, was, I, I incorrectly communicated that, I guess. No, you're fired. That's what you should, those are the bare minimum things you should know. So if you don't know what to review, and you screw up in a major way in a big-time game, you need to lose your job. Maybe he did. Maybe he's never going to work again. And I keep saying he. It could be a she. I don't care who it is. Whoever's doing it needs to be fired. Directly impacted the game. It's disgusting that it keeps happening. And that's the type of deal where, again, if it was a judgment call, I, I, they should have just said, first off, if they would have said nothing, I would have liked it more. If they would have said it was a judgment call and said that it was uh, called incorrectly on the floor, still would have been mad. But 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 when you have it, a person whose job is to know, to know that they got to review this, and they say, ah, nah, it's not a reviewable play. I just imagine him like sitting back and like watching these monitors up there, just eating a, a bag of chips, and uh, you know he's got he's got a, a diet diet coke next to him, as he's had like three of them already today. Just sitting back and he's got his little headset on. Hey hey hey, hey, hey Jerry. Jerry, uh, we need to play review. review. Oh, okay, yeah, let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't review that one. Can't re I, uh, yeah, I can't review that one. Are you sure, Jerry? I'm pretty sure that this. Nope, nope, nope. It's, uh, yeah, you can't really see anything. So, anyways, so not nah, you. Just you guys got it. You can take care of it. And he like switches back over to watch uh, you know, reruns of Hee Haw. Like that's just the way I feel like it went down. So, anyways, I'm still mad about it. I'm still bitter about it. But yeah, thanks SEC for admitting you screwed up. But doesn't change anything because Arkansas still lost the game. Stupid. Dumb. Anyways, let me tell you something that's not dumb and stupid. Bill Barr. I love Bill Barr. I'm trying to get back into the gym and get me some protein and, and all those things. And it's tough sometimes because sometimes I don't feel like a protein shake, you know? Sometimes I don't feel like cooking anything, making anything. But Bill Barr is what helps me out with that because it's packed with 17 grams of protein, only 130 calories, and very low on sugar. And it tastes amazing. That's the best part about it. It'd be one thing if they packed it all in and it tastes like you were eating tree bark, but it's not. It tastes like you're eating a candy bar and they have so many different flavors to choose from, whether it's churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, no matter what it is, they got you taken care of and set up. You can visit their website at build.com so you can see all the different flavors you have to choose from. You can order it around too, but at your local Walmart and Sam's Club, Check them out there as well. They have them in the pharmacy section. You can get you a four-bar box of cookies and cream, or you can go with the 13-bar box of brownie butter and churro. I have to try the churros. I actually haven't had those yet, but I do love some churros. But either way, you're going to thank me later because if you haven't tried them yet, you're in for a treat. So check out Built Bar by going to built.com or go to your local Walmart and Sam's Club and get you some Built Bars. You are locked on Razorbacks. 
your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, again, it's you, people probably get tired of uh, these random things that I end up doing, but I do them because I feel like it needs to be said and shown appreciation to all of you. So we hit the 5,000 subscribers on YouTube just yesterday. And so a lot of you may not know what that means, essentially, or like, is that a big deal? Is it is it normal? Whatever. Well, I can tell you this. I... I have done this now for over a year, about a year and a month on YouTube, something like that. And we have had 5,000 subscribers, starting from scratch, 5,000 subscribers. So you're talking about essentially 400-ish subscribers per month growing into it. And if you look around at a lot of the other Locked On podcast networks, especially in college, there are a few that are high up in, in subs. I mean, I know that uh, Locked on Auburn with Zach Blackerby does a great job with that. He's got almost 10,000, so he's been killing it. So he's got a bunch. I know that uh, Locked on Canes for her, uh, Miami has a lot. Uh, Tennessee has a lot. So there's, there's a few that are up there that are doing really great things and having a lot. But this podcast is, uh, is up there with the best of them as far as subs, as far as listens, as far as downloads, which I always laugh at because I have some people – who uh, may or may not work in the national podcast network that don't really understand. They're like, wait a minute, how? It's Arkansas. Well, when uh, when you're the uh, number one Razorback podcast in the world, <laughs> and you're also putting out uh, consistent content where it gets a lot of interaction from listeners and downloads, and you have a passionate Razorback fan base to uh, be able to talk to and talk with, that always is going to be huge and always going to help. So... It's it's amazing how much it grows. And this past year, it, it's grown just in on audio, not even the YouTube, but on the audio side. Every year I've been doing this. It's just been growing dramatically. And on YouTube, also been growing dramatically. Just over the past few weeks, it's been wild to see the numbers that uh, we're putting up and, and then being able to have so many listeners and people who comment and, and talk and, and share this. Like it, It's just awesome. So 5,000 subs in about a year. It is incredible is absolutely incredible because i even see some of the other like outlets if you will just here locally at arkansas who do a great job so i'm not hating on them or anything they do an awesome job but i see some places that have been doing a youtube page for a lot longer period of time like years five ten years who have content going out every single day multiple types of things that they're putting out every single day and they're not that far ahead of me and in the subs like they're they're not to uh at least to the point to where people would be uh you know sub you would think that they would be so much higher and they are they're still higher so again i'm not hating on them they're, they put out great content but to put it in perspective that's kind of what we're looking at right now just how fast it's grown compared to places that have been having youtube pages for much longer and have been putting out a lot more content uh, for Arkansas sports and everything is just awesome to see how fast it's gone. So the majority of my audience is on YouTube, which is so funny to me. It's a podcast, but I, I think it's like 68% of my audience here on the podcast listens or watches on YouTube, which again is great. I love that. It makes it worthwhile, especially since you have to deal with my ugly face every single day if you're watching it or if you're just listening to it, maybe you just turn it off and like, ah, don't want to see him. Uh, whatever you end up doing. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say thank you again for all your subs, all you people who subscribe, who listen and watch every day. It is so cool and so awesome to see the growth of it. And I can't wait to see the continuation of it each and every day. Hopefully this ends up being another big year where we have a lot more fun things to talk about. Be nice. Would be nice, but we have to wait and see. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.